Now let's have a look at some of the basic commands that are available for this sort of thing. We have some security related commands that include who am I, ID, SU and new group. And I'll just give you a brief demonstration of how each of those is used. We'll start with who am I. Who am I is a very simple program or it's actually the, the who program that is running with the specific arguments of am I and we run it and we find out that we are running on a particular computer called the following that's everything up to the exclamation mark followed by our username which is possibly the most important thing here mvirtue is my username followed by the terminal that I'm logged in on which is pts slash 31 which may or may not mean anything to you and the date that I logged in which was June 26, 1231 which is about half an hour ago now this command is useful if you ever walk up to a terminal where somebody's logged in and you need to know exactly who is logged in or what the terminal identifier is or how long the person has been logged in let's move on we'll have a look at the ID command ID is also a simple command just type in ID and you get the following information you learn again your username and you also learn your user number every username has its own number in this case in virtue is 3040 but now I also find out my group ID which is users so I am currently thought of as being logged in as part of the users group which happens to be group ID 100 now the third thing on the list is called groups and that is actually a list of comma separated group names and group IDs of which I am a member but it turns out that I'm only a member of one group which is the users group if I was a member say also of the sales group then I would see 100 brackets users followed by say 200 brackets sales separated by commas so I guess we need to establish the relationship between your current group ID and the list of groups and the relationship is this groups lists all the groups that you are considered to be a member of and your current group ID shows the current group that the system is treating you as a member of I'll give you a concrete example of this something you can hopefully relate to let's say my groups were both sales and managers because I am one of the managers of the company and I'm also part of the sales team perhaps I'm the sales manager in this situation when I log into the system I will be automatically logged in as one of those two groups let's say it's sales that will be my automatic current group ID when I log in but then suppose I wish to access some of the files or programs on the system that are restricted only to managers what I conceptually have to do is take off my sales hat and put on my managers hat in other words I have to switch my group from that of sales to that of managers I do that using the new group command I would say new group managers or something like that and press enter naturally I'm only allowed to switch between the various groups of which I am a member I can try this command it's probably not going to work not only because I'm not a member of the managers group but there probably isn't a managers group so there we go no such group so the bottom line is if you're a member of several groups you might find yourself using the new group command several times during the day to essentially if you like switch hats finally it is actually possible if you like to assume the identity of somebody else on the system needless to say the only way of doing that is if you know their password you also have to obviously know their username obviously if you know their username and password you could just log in as them if you chose to but it's sometimes a hassle to interrupt what you're doing at the moment by logging out and logging in as somebody else so instead the system provides a command called SU which is actually short for super user even though we are not necessarily at attempting to become super user it's SU and then you type in the username that you're trying to become so I know of a another user on this system who allows me to use their password by the name of Avon 
So I type SU Avon, press enter, I'm asked for a password which I will now type in. And now I am known as Avon at this particular computer, but I have not moved. I'm still in the same home directory. I'm not really logged in as them, I'm just pretending to be them. If I logged in as them I'd end up in their home directory, not in my own. So now I can do things that they have permission to do, but I cannot do things that I have permission to do. What's actually happened here is I have another shell running temporarily. My first shell has been momentarily suspended and a second shell has kicked into place in which I am now called Avon. In the original shell I was known as mVirtue and had all of mVirtue's permissions. That shell has been suspended momentarily. Now I'm in a new shell where I have all of Avon's permissions. So for example I could do an ls minus l and I don't even have permission to do an ls minus l in this directory. When I'm finished being Avon I can simply type exit which will exit the current shell. Remember we talked about exit for the logout command. Well I'm now back to being mVirtue and I, now I can do an ls minus l without any trouble. Now if I want to log in as Avon in the same manner and do an SU, instead of SU Avon, I can do SU dash space Avon. Notice the spaces around the dash before and after. And what that will do is we'll actually do a full simulation of Avon logging in. So I'll end up in his um, home directory. So the home directory is home Avon here, and I can do an LS minus L, and there's his set of files which is of course different to my set of files. Notice that he is a member of the same group. I can run the id command now and find much the same information as if I was in virtue. Again, I simply use exit to return to being me.